now even more additional barriers have been have been placed on us, such as masks and social distancing. I mean, these policies interfere and disregard people such as myself who rely heavily on ASL, which is 70% facial. So before the pandemic, yeah, things were bad, but now it's magnified. The definition of a barrier is um, anything that prevents a person with a disability from fully participating in all aspects of society. So I guess you can imagine I'm not fully participating in society and neither are all my deaf friends. Tamara Ugolini here with Rebel News, and today I am going to highlight the awful ways in which the COVID response has further isolated the deaf community. Early on in the knee-jerk, unbalanced way governments around the world, and of course also here in Canada, responded to the pandemic pandemonium, the mainstream media was at the time acknowledging how inaccessible communication was in wake of unprecedented staying home, isolating and social distancing seen throughout the spring of 2020. The deaf and hard of hearing, well, their public communication has been hindered by the lack of facial cues, the inability to use touch and lip reading to communicate. And then of course, the use of plexiglass further muffles the sound even further. I haven't had my hearing tested, but even I struggle to understand people who are speaking to me in a mask, especially when there is an additional barrier between us of plexiglass. So I can just even imagine how hard it must be for someone who actually can't hear. And to gain more insight and understanding, I wanted to bring you, our Rebel viewers, the lived experience of a deaf man. His name is Patrizio Presenza. And because I was unable to provide him with an interpreter, his brother, who acts as his support person, he and I had to get creative with how we could get Patrizio's story across on the Rebel platform. So with the help of Patrizio's brother, his name is Alessandro Presenza, we decided that I would outline specific specific questions to them, and they would record their responses, and then we'd edit the whole thing into one cohesive report. First, I asked them for their perspectives on the hardest part of navigating this COVID response, both as a deaf person and as a support person, and how COVID policies may conflict with legislation such as the Ontarians with Disabilities Act. In closing, I wanted to know their opinion on what the remedy was, and what they would like to see changed. First, let's hear it from Patrizio. Thank you for having me, Tamara, here today. So my name is Patrizio Persenza. I was born to Italian immigrants and my parents didn't know sign language or English efficiently, so I did experience communication barriers when I was a child. But I developed the reading and mouthing skills and the ability to read their gestures and facial expressions. So I attended elementary and high school, but these schools, huge problems. They didn't provide any interpreters or note taking or TV, closed captions, and the teachers, they didn't even know sign language. So it was a big problem back then as well. And again, faced barriers even then. Seems like this was the norm. So I was surrounded by people, but I was isolated. And this was like 45 years ago, and it's still an issue. I couldn't participate in class or society discussions with other students. So these were all barriers back then. So I attended Gallaudet University in the US and there were no existing barriers. The university was fully accessible and fully accommodating. So now this pandemic the hardest part is it has exposed Canada's backwardness. You know, Canada's insensitivities. Seems like our 
public health authorities and politicians interfered with our grammar and our expressions, cutting off our communication in the deaf community. It's funeral homes, shopping malls, churches. I mean, I couldn't understand people. They don't seem to know how to or be aware of how to accommodate us as they are lost without any kind of map making it very impossible to navigate. So as I explained, now even more additional barriers have been, have been placed on us, such as masks and social distancing. I mean, these policies interfere and disregard people such as myself who rely heavily on ASL, which is 70% facial. So before the pandemic, yeah, things were bad, but now it's magnified. And um, during this pandemic, the um, I feel like the AODA, the Disability Act, um, conflicts um, with these pandemic policies. So the definition of a barrier is um, anything that prevents a person with a disability from fully participating in all aspects of society. So I guess you can imagine I'm not fully participating in society and neither are all my deaf friends. So that's a really great question. I mean, the remedy is awareness. The remedy is education. So I'm trying to do what I can, educating and teaching ASL, you know, to show people what it's like to be deaf, to live in a deaf world, to experience silence. I mean, so education is the key. I'd also like to see the date changed. So 2025 is four more years of barriers and isolation. And I just can't even imagine that. They're talking about implementation of the, A the Disability Act by 2025. So businesses should be accommodating all deaf people in their venues and all deaf people should be allowed to go into a business freely and be accommodated. So I'm calling on the businesses to do that. I'd like to see more people learn ASL and more businesses maybe join our efforts with other organizations to remove these barriers. Um, but we'll save that for another time. In the meantime, thanks for having me today. The feelings of isolation, while well, those far exceeded the pandemic, and they're in unimaginable for any of us, but the response to a seasonal respiratory virus has only further isolated and segregated those already feeling like sideliners. It's horrific and it's unjustified. Now, I had pointed those same questions to Alessandro from the perspective of a support person, and here is what he had to say. And you can imagine what it's like being pulled over by the police for a routine check or to walk into a public place or to walk into a business and be met by people who have a cloth mask that covers everything. American Sign Language is 70% facial. That's where the grammar is. It's in the face. And by cutting that off, we've further estranged the deaf community completely. We've further isolated the deaf community community completely. And that's how, as a support person, I would say the hardest part navigating this has been the heartbreaking policy, the heartbreaking, the inability for our policy and for our, our society overall to understand what it's like to be in the deaf community. So we ought to be able to look back on some of the things that we were, if you want to use the term doing wrong, and learn from those, but our government hasn't done that and our uh, public health authorities haven't done that at all. In fact, they've done the opposite. But here's the definition of a barrier. My brother alluded to it. It's anything, anything that prevents a person with a disability from fully participating in all aspects of society and it goes on to talk about what that includes. And here's some of the things that it includes. A physical barrier, an architectural barrier, an information barrier, 
or a communication barrier and an attitudinal barrier. I mean, the fact is that once we've completely masked up that way, we've erected now a communication barrier. As it turns out, these brothers have taken it upon themselves to try to address the inequalities faced by those who are deaf or rely on lip reading to communicate. Together, they have started an American Sign Language, also known as ASL, class. They're offering a free introductory introductory sign language workshop, which are live and interactive as well as mostly silent for a real deaf experience. You can visit their website at al-marsolutions.com to find out more. One thing is abundantly clear, and it just continues to be reinforced as I hear from more and more people who have been harmed directly by COVID policies that do not consider previously hailed checks and balances in place for public policy. It's not a few weeks or a few months. This is going on year number three of disastrous and harmful policy enforcement. Decision makers and policy makers on all levels of government should start to rein in these one size fits all approaches that have dragged on longer than any of us could have imagined and only serve to further isolate and widen communication gaps. For Rebel News, I'm Tamara Ugolini. No one is more tired of these mandates than those who have been disproportionately affected by them. That's why Canadian truckers have banded together from coast to coast to express their displeasure with the Canadian government and these never-ending COVID mandates, restrictions, rules, and guidelines. As we have rebel reporters not only bringing you the story from various provinces, but we have also embedded reporters directly within the convoy so that we can bring you on the ground reporting like we have always done. You can keep up with these reports and help to fund the expenses associated with this extensive travel at convoyreports.com. We will have daily updates and bring you breaking news as it happens. Follow along and chip in if you can at convoyreports.com.